here with Workers World Party and we'll talk a little bit about Baltimore where I'm at right now. But first I wanted to at least let the sisters and brothers know what is Workers World Party? It is a revolutionary socialist organization. We are fighting for workers. We are workers. We are fighting for all those who are exploited and oppressed. Many of us are unemployed. Some of us don't have a union. Some of us do have a union. But basically, we are fighting so that the 99% can control this country. And we have pledged to leave no stone unturned to do whatever is necessary. And we have chapters all across the country, from Los Angeles to Baltimore to New York City, all across the country. We have pledged to do everything in our power to stop this attack on the postal workers. I want to briefly explain a little bit about Baltimore uh, Tom Dodge from Baltimore could certainly testify to this. Our city has been devastated by the jobless crisis, by racism and all the cuts. And as many of you know, the post office has always been the bastion for women workers, for people of color, for black, Latino, and Asian and Native workers. It's the one place where pe the government was forced to hire people. This struggle is not just about jobs alone. It's about civil rights. And we, our members in Workers World Party, along with, we're partnering with the Occupy for Jobs Movement Network and also the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. We plan to file a suit on the basis of civil rights denial. Let me tell you, if you've gone to Baltimore, you know why this is so important, why the struggle for jobs and for the post office is so critical. Tom can tell you this, you walk through the streets and houses are boarded up one after another. 50% of our young people are without jobs. We cannot afford to let the postal workers stand alone in this battle. Their fight is our fight. It's a class-wide fight. It's not just about postal workers alone. I want to end by just saying this postal workers that are out here today and the community of New York City, you are not alone. And every city we need to join hands. It's not just about a post office being closed. It's about the entire working class coming under attack. Workers power, people's power. Let's fight to stop the closings. Let's fight to save the jobs. Let's defend civil rights for all of us. Si se puede, si se puede, although this was a um, long list of speakers, it feels like really short, doesn't it? Because everyone here is voicing the oppressed, everyone here is voicing the millions and millions of oppressed, not only in the United States but worldwide, because we understand that the economic crisis here in the United States is a world crisis produced by the 1%. And I'm here to say, brothers and sisters, that from Greece to Egypt to Tunisia to Venezuela to Honduras, the workers of the world, to New York, the streets of New York, Wisconsin, the workers of the world unite to bring down the oppressive, racist, capitalist, imperialist system, the 1%. So are we ready to fight back? Are we ready to fight back? Our next speaker, is Sarah Flanders. She's a sister. She's a freedom fighter nationally, locally, internationally. And she's here today to speak to us representing the UNAC. That's the United National Anti-War Coalition. Please let's receive it with a big applause, compañeros and compañeras. Y si se puede. Sisters and brothers, I want to talk about the war the war that's going on, and it's a war of the 1% against the 99% all over the world. It's right here in New York, it's across this country, 
But you look at what's happening to the workers in Greece and in Italy. What are they doing? You wake up one day and you hear your paycheck is worth only 40% of what it was the day before. The bankers declare your pension no longer exists. That's a kind of war that is going on against working people around the world. Now there's also a war, there's U.S. war. Let's talk about Afghanistan. They're willing to spend $10 billion every month. $10 billion. That's our money. That's money for our schools and our hospitals and our libraries and our future. And that's being spent on war. And it's being spent on the massacres of children. It's being spent on laying waste to a whole country. We got to bring those soldiers home, every single one of them. And while they're willing to spend $10 billion a month, $120 billion a year, and they're doing it, the longest war in U.S. history, 10 years, trillions of dollars. We're talking trillions of dollars. Now, the post office, that doesn't cost, that doesn't cost the federal budget, that doesn't cost Congress anything, anything. But they want to destroy 200,000 workers' future and the future of their families. It's all financial finagling. You're supposed to pay, postal workers are paying for the pension 75 years in the future for people who aren't even born yet. And then they say the post office is bankrupt. It's part of the war on services. We have a right to health care. We have a right to jobs, and we have a right to postal services and mail services. We got that right. It's right. It's from the very beginning. It's actually the first service that this country ever provided. The right to communicate, the right to hear from family across the country. That was the first service, and actually, the Congress didn't even pay for it. It's paid for out of stamps. It's paid for out of the fees. They don't even pay for it, but they still want to destroy it. They want to destroy it because it's part of a war also on black workers, on Latino workers, on women workers. They're saying, you have too much. We don't want anyone to have pensions or unions. No, we all supposed to work freelance or be unemployed. No benefits, no health care, no pensions. All over the world, people are standing up and resisting. The 99%, we got to know, they're speaking out, they're acting, they're mobilizing, they're occupying. Yes, they're occupying all across the country. And the postal workers have been right in the front of this fight. They led the way in 1970. They showed it was possible. They showed it was possible to win a strong unions, to win a future for your children, to win good jobs, to win benefits. And now, now that 1%, they want it all. They want our houses, they want schools, they want the union jobs, and we say no. We say no. We need jobs, not war. Jobs, not war. We need jobs, not war. Jobs, not war. Jobs, not war. Shut it down. Shut it down. We're going to be out there on International Women's Day. We're going to rally at the Bull in Lower Manhattan. That's going to be Saturday, March 31st. And we're going to be talking about the postal workers and all the workers, but especially women workers. That's an important day. And on May 1st, May 1st, that's a workers' day all over the world, all over the world. Workers stand strong. Well, this year, on May Day, we're saying shut it down. Shut it down. No work, no school. Walk out, stay away, stand strong, and fight back. Thank you. Ninety-nine percent. Ninety-nine percent. 
99% rule. Before inviting a rank and file postal worker, James, to speak, I just want to make sure that you all defend your right to contribute to this rally. The bo I think that our bags and boxes going around, I think you all know what it's for. This truck, this sound system, those signs, everything it takes to keep it going as well as make it happen. So don't give up your right to contribute and do it just as strongly as you possibly can, knowing that it's for you and all of us. Our next speaker was walking by and said, hey, I would like to say a few words. What do you think? His name is James. Okay, everybody pay attention. The post office says they're losing money because, because of the internet. No, you know why they're losing money? Because they closed down from eight in the morning to four in the afternoon the processing plant in Morgan. They cut down the workers, okay? That's one problem. The second problem is I drive a seven ton truck, okay? Every night I drive a seven truck and I do my job to the fullest, okay? I have to wait online with my truck one hour because they cut down on workers and I have to breathe that diesel fuel, okay? That's what's hurting the post office too. When I can't deliver my mail on time, Mr. Yeah, Pacheco, get more workers and take off that suit you have on that you, that you do. All you do is get paid 250000 to wear a two-piece two -piece suit, and all you do is fashion model. Do your work. I am tired of waiting online one hour every day with my mail, and I can't deliver on time and breathe in that diesel. I want to see my kids graduate from college. I'm, I am tired of breathing that diesel, and I want the best for our workers. I wish you all the best. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. See some Friday. See some Friday. See some Friday.